What we're going to be doing in this session is entering credit notes on our purchases. Occasionally we have to return goods that are faulty. Occasionally we've been overcharged what was um, originally quoted. We also need to be able to apply those credit notes against the original invoices or if we don't have the original invoices, maybe we received an invoice, paid it, received the same invoice again as sometimes happens, paid that, we've now paid twice for the same thing and we need to receive a check or a payment back from our supplier. In order to enter a credit note, we'll go to Purchases Register. You'll notice that there are a number more invoices than uh, when you last looked at this particular screen. We've just added a few to uh, make it look a bit more realistic. And if we look there, we can see that on the third line down, invoice or purchase order number four for two and a half thousand dollars was for 50 items at 45, 45, 45, and it came to two and a half thousand dollars. If you've already watched the sales credit note section, you'll be aware that one of our customers had to return to us some items that he'd bought and he returned 10 items to us. They were defective. Now it's our turn to return those same items to the big supplier, our supplier, and get a credit note. So what we will do is to click OK and we'll go to New Purchase. It's a bill. Our customer is big supplier. When I put that in, it reminds me I have a purchase order outstanding with him. Do I want to use it? On this occasion, no. All I do is press cancel. I am returning to him 10 items. In the bill area, I put in a minus sign for 10. It tells me I'm receiving minus 10 or unreceiving them or sending them back. It then asks me for the item number A001. which is a new item, and the price I could put in 45.4545 and guess it's going to be the total, or I can put in a total that I know. If I bought 50 and they cost me 2500 if I'm sending back 10, they're going to cost me $500. I can go and make that tax inclusive, and I can put in a total item there of $500. $100. It gives me a price of $50. If I now make it tax exclusive, it tells me that I'm getting 45.455, etc. And it works it out for me, the figures. There are a number of ways of putting that in. I need to put the minus sign back in. And it now creates it as minus 500 and NYOB in its rounding decides to change it. I'll make it back to the tax exclusive. I'll change that to minus 500. I'll make it tax inclusive. And it tells me that is now the price of the individual item without GST. It doesn't happen every day. However, we've now got it in for the right amount. Let us click record and cancel. I can now see here on the purchases register that I have a debit note of $500 against my supplier, big supplier. If I go to returns and debits at the top, there will be just the one item there from the big supplier at minus $500. Because I now want to apply this to a purchase, if I click on Apply to Purchase, it will come up with a list of all the items there that I have outstanding for a big supplier. My debit amount is 500. Which one am I going to put it against? I'll put it against the first item there for $2,500. All I have to do now is to record it 
and I have nothing left in my returns and credits. If I go back to all purchases, the $500, the amount due on it, is now zero. There may be times when I get a credit for a bulk discount against what transactions I've made for the last month or so. And I get a general credit note being a reduction for being a good customer. Most of us are fairly used to this with uh, vouchers from uh, grocery suppliers who give us eight cents per litre back at certain service stations, that sort of thing. We actually are cashing in a credit note when we get those. But the amount is unrealised or unknown. It depends how much we filled our tanks with. Or I can go to my local petrol station, fill up with petrol, take it to my uh, grocery store and get a discount there. If I get one of these, all I have to do is enter a new purchase. The layout I want to change to a service layout and I'll click OK. And Big Supplier in his customer loyalty is giving me a refund of $100. If I put in his name, again it asks me if I want to use that purchase. No, I'll cancel that. And if I put in there in the description, loyalty discount, press tab, which account am I going to apply it against? Am I going to apply it against the actual purchases or am I going to apply it against, say, a discount account? The choice is yours. In my case, it's a reduction in the cost as far as I'm concerned, so I'll apply it against the purchases. If I go up to the cost of sales area, there is my materials account. I'll click materials, I'll use that account, and it tells me the account number I'm going to use. I'm getting a loyalty discount of $100. All I have to do is enter minus 100. Is there GST on it? That's a very good question. I don't know. <laughs> Check with your local accounting authority, your accountant or your financial consultant or your BAS agent. As far as I'm aware, I don't think there is a GST component of a loyalty discount. However, please don't take my word for it. Rely on your own advice. All I have to do now is to click record. And I've now got the invoice or the credit note entered. Click cancel and it takes me back to the purchases register and if I now click on returns and debits I have from Big Supplier a credit note for $100. Big Supplier always sends me a check for that refund. So to receive a refund at the bottom of the screen I've got receive a refund. It says who paid you? The Big Supplier. How much did he pay you? $100. I can put in the payment method, might be a direct debit to my bank account if he knows my bank account details, or it might be a check. I'm not going to group it with undeposited funds, I'm going to deposit it direct to the account. Click on there, and which account? It's not going to my electronic clearing account, it's going to my check account. I'll use that account, the date is correct, all I have to do now is to record it. Click record. I now have no returns and debits outstanding. If I click all purchases, it takes me back to the main purchases register screen. That is basically how to handle credit notes.